QuickBooks Online 2024, pay payroll taxes. Get ready and some coffee because we're doing some quick thinking with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Jit Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation, opening up the major financial statement reports like we do every time, the reports on the left. In the favorites, we're right-clicking on that balance sheet to open a link in a new tab. Right-click in the profit and loss. Also, opening link in a new tab. Same thing with the trusty trial balance. Let's tab to the right, close up the hamburger, and change the range. We're going from 01024 tab, 022924 tab. And then let's see it month by month, side by side, run it. And then we'll tab to the right. Close up the hamburger again and range change 010124 tab 02924 tab. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com and month by month, run it one more time, repeating the process, tabbing to the right, closing the hamburger and the times they are changing. 010124 tab, 022924 tab, dropping it down to months, refreshing the report. Let's go back to the balance sheet and discuss what we're going to do next, which is the pain of the payroll taxes. You will recall in a prior presentation, we processed payroll for the second time in our practice problem. And now we have all these, these liabilities piling up here that we need to be paying to the government. So quick recap of the process, of the payroll process. If we look at the flowchart, this being a desktop flowchart that we're using for online purposes, just so we can see the flow of the forms, which will be in essence the same for the payroll process. So payroll down below. First, we have the time entry, which might not be something you do for payroll. You might be using that to generate invoices. If you have salaried employees, then you might not have to enter the time at all because you're paying them salary. Then we process the pay. You might do that weekly, semi-weekly, uh, bi-weekly, or semi-monthly or bi-weekly, <laughs> or monthly. We're doing it monthly. So we had two months. We've processed two payrolls at this point in time. So when we process the payroll, as we saw last time, we have an increase to a liability as a result of us having to withhold money from the employees as though they're babies. So we have to pay the taxes on their behalf because the government makes us do that. And we had our payroll taxes that we had to also pay and we have not yet paid it. So it's in the liability account now. Now, sometime after processing the payroll, we will have to take the money that we took from the employees as well as our payroll taxes and pay them to the government, reducing the liability. And then we're, that's going to be when we pay the liability. So there's kind of a widget to do that. If you're processing in QuickBooks, they hopefully have everything set up and QuickBooks will make that an easy thing to do. Once we pay the, the liabilities at the end of the quarter on a quarterly basis, then we typically have to file 941 forms, summary forms, kind of like a 1040 for individual income taxes. And at the end of the year, we then have to do the 940 for federal unemployment tax summary report, similar to a 1040 for individual income taxes. And then we have to do the W-2s and the W-3s, of course. And if we deal with state taxes, state tax stuff as well. So we're going to imagine back on over here, we turned on our payroll in prior presentations. That's in the first tab. 
we have the payroll on the left, noting that you might do payroll in QuickBooks. You might have a third party process the payroll. Either way, you're typically going to have to pay for the processing of payroll, upselling in QuickBooks, or possibly paying someone else to do it outside uh, of QuickBooks. That's just the way it goes. You could try to do it yourself without the upsell, but wouldn't really recommend it even if you only have a few employees because payroll can get uh, complicated and you want to make sure that you're in compliance so that you don't get hit with fairly hefty penalties and interest and the pain of trying to fix a messed up payroll process. So we turned on the payroll, we added our employees, and then we processed the payroll for two months of payroll as of this point in time. And so now we have the, the point where we need to be paying the payroll, the payroll taxes that is. So we can go over here, then we have the employees and then we have the payroll taxes. If I go into the payroll taxes tab, I'm gonna close up the hamburger. It says here, we need more information to pay and file your taxes. So you'll have to manually file and pay your taxes until you provide all the necessary information. So obviously if you're gonna be paying electronically on the payroll taxes, you have to have the system set up to be properly paying those institutions. And oftentimes uh, the government might want their money in some kind of electronic type of transfer system. And then down below, you have the, the time frame of the items in a nice handy little widget that basically is all set up for us. So we have the California uh, PIT, the income tax and the, and the SDI that is currently owed and it's gonna be due on 215 according to what we have in the system for our practice problem. The federal taxes on the 941, which includes the social security, Medicare and federal income tax for both the, uh, uh, the well, those are the federal taxes. And then we also have uh, the federal taxes here, which is gonna be, this is the following month, I believe. So that's due on 315. So these are the two that we're basically looking at at this point. Let's show all, and this gives us the rest. So this one is due on 315 and then 430 and then and then 13125. Okay, so if we look at our liabilities over here, our liabilities have been broken out in the liability section by who we need to basically pay, California taxes, and then the SUI for California, a different type of California tax, and then the federal taxes for this whole this whole group uh, would be the, the Social Security, Medicare, and federal income tax. And then this is the federal tax for unemployment or FUTA. Now, I, and then we had our adjustment that we made. Now, if you're running real time, then you can basically, if everything's running smoothly, then we can process the pay with our pay liabilities section. And that would process another check, which would be similar to just an expense form or check, right? Expense or check form, but it would be a pay, a pay, a uh, payroll liabilities check, similar to what we saw when we have like a uh, pay bill type of check, right? It's still a check, but it has a, its own kind of designation when we look at it in the transaction detail. However, because this is a practice problem and we once again want to tie into what we see on the bank reconciliations, we're just going to do manual entries here. So you wouldn't really want to do manual entries, entering a manual check. You would want to use the widget so that everything is done within QuickBooks because that makes it so your reports will, will run smoothly. And just note the payroll, the whole widget system within QuickBooks works pretty well. Everything, everything gets set up and works well. But if you mess something up and you have to do something outside of the payroll system, you can throw things off, right? And then, you, and then it becomes kind of a problem to get back in line with everything running through the widget. That's one of the not so great things about everything being completely automated because it's difficult to make an adjustment <laughs> that's not part of the automated system, right? So I just wanna point that out. But for our practice problem purposes, we're just gonna write a check. And basically the idea is gonna be that we're writing checks to pay off the payroll liability in January. And then the, the February payroll liability that has accrued will remain on the books 
and we will pay that off in the following month, uh, which would be March, which is outside the scope of our practice problem. So the January payroll left us with 2,028.48. We're just going to think of it in total of a liability. And so that's the amount that we're basically going to pay off, leaving us with the difference between these two left, which would be the payroll that was accrued in February. That's the idea. Now, we're going to do this with three separate paychecks that are not going to tie out exactly to these totals because we're trying to use something that's going to tie out to our practice problem for the bank reconciliations. So we're going to do a little bit of a deviation. Let's go to the first tab. Instead of doing this, we're just going to hit the drop down and just do a normal check, which you wouldn't to normally do for payroll. And we're going to say this is going to be, I'm going to say the, the first one, I'm just going to call it IRS. And I'm going to say FIT. This is a generic vendor that we're going to be setting up to pay the payroll taxes to the government, federal income tax. I'm going to save it. And it's going to be the checking account. Okay. And we're going to pay it on 0229, let's say uh, 24. And then the other category, I'm going to put it into the adjustment account. If I go back on over here, you can see we have the payroll liability adjustment. I'm going to put it in there as kind of our summary account instead of decreasing each one of these, as would be the case if we used the widget so we can kind of see what's happening broken out in different accounts. So I'm going to call it payroll liability adjustment. So we'll just call it payroll liability adjustment. And so that'll be the first payment that we make. I'm going to make that one for 1080. And so this is just going to decrease the checking account and the other side's going to pay down the liability and that liability adjustment. And then I'm going to make another one hitting the drop down. I want to save and new. And so this one, I'm just going to make another vendor for, I'm going to call it IRS Medicare, which is one that you would probably pay at the same time, Social Security and Medicare, both part of the, the FICA uh, taxes. But I'm going to break it out for here and then tab because it'll match what's in our bank reconciliations. And so we're going to say, duh, duh, duh. this is going to be once again, the payroll liability payroll liability adjustment account payroll liability pay roll liability adjustment account and that one i'm going to say is for 82.52 82.52 and i'm going to do one more save and new and so we'll do one more i'm going to call it irs social Social Security and tab and I'll just add that one same date and we're gonna say this is gonna go into payroll tax liability uh, payroll tax liability where did it go there it is and then we'll make that one for once again uh, this time 865.94 Okay, so let's go ahead and say save and close this time. And then if I go back to my balance sheet and run it, run this report, then in the liability accounts, we have kind of a mess, but we basically stuffed everything into this account here. So this is the taxes that accumulated in January, adding up to 2028.48. And then we paid those off in February in this adjustment account. In practice, if we used the widget, all of these would be, of course, credited individually in the following month, right? We would, we would decrease each individual uh, account if we broke it out into its own category and the widget would help us to apply that uh, check out. But in our problem, we just used a normal check. And so we can see it a little bit more transparently. We put it into this account. So this account, we've got the three checks that we wrote. So we've got the three checks are uh, this one, the 82.52 plus the 1080. Okay, one is missing. I think I put it to the wrong account. So I'm going to go, I think it went into the tax account. So if I go into the tax account, I put it into the payroll tax adjustment. 
And if I go into this one, it was this uh, 865.94, which was that check. So I should have put that into the liability. So I'm going to drill down on it and fix it. So I'm going to say this one needs to go to payroll liability adjustment account, not the payroll expense. And then I'll save and close that and then back and then go back to the balance sheet, run it again, and then scroll down and we should see then in the payroll adjustment going into the payroll adjustment account. We then have our three checks, which are the 1080 plus the uh, 82.52 plus the 865.94. And that's the 202846. If I go back here, we could see that we have the, the, the January liability 202848. So it's a couple pennies off. That's gonna, so that's the general idea. So we had the payroll go up in January. We're paying it off in February. What is left in February then as a liability are the accrued of the liability for the February paychecks, which was just one because we're paying monthly in our case. So if we ran the payroll reports, then we could we should be able to tie in basically the liability as of the end of the period. Now, there's something I just want to note here that if you had like a third party process the payroll, you'll note that the, the this liability, this payroll liability is just a timing difference. So in other words, if I if I go to my payroll taxes over here, we, we can see that, you know, everything's going to run through the income statement at some point there's only a difference on on the timing difference meaning when we process the payroll we we recorded an expense of this amount but then we withheld uh the taxes now if you were on a cash based system and and you worked with a cpa firm to do an adjustment at the end of the period you could simply wait until it clears the bank use the bank feeds to record the net check instead of the full check here and then when you paid off the payroll, as we saw here, that will also clear the bank. And when it clears the bank, you could have sim you could just simply record it as again, payroll expense using the bank feeds because you have someone else, a third party, an ADP or a paycheck, for example, processing the payroll. And, and so then you would see it's just a timing difference. So, and then at the end of the year, possibly you can get the, the payroll reports from the payroll provider and possibly have your CPA firm or tax preparer do the adjustment at the end of the year. And if they do the adjustment at the end of the year, they can then break out the wages versus the taxes, the payroll taxes versus the wages, as well as any accrual that needs to be in place, meaning withholdings and your portion of the payroll taxes for the last pay period which has not yet been paid so that you can create the financial statements as of the cutoff date, the end of the year for taxes or possibly for external reporting as well. So in other words, if I went to the tab to the right, right click on this and duplicate this tab, and we go into, let's say uh, our payroll reports, let's go into our reports down below, close this out, and we're gonna go down all the way down to the bottom, we've got our payroll reports. Now we saw that that you have those ex the 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 reports that you can export to Excel that we saw before. That's a nice tool. Let's just take a look at the payroll summary report here. And I'm going to make this go from 010124 to 022924 and then apply. And so now basically we have our uh, summary. So we've got the uh, checks that went out. Uh, each of the checks that went out for the two pay periods that have happened. Uh, we have the employee taxes that were withheld, the net pay, the employer taxes. So that's a pretty summarized report. Let's go back on over and open up another one. I'm going to go back down and say uh, payroll item list. No, what did I want? What was the one I like here? I think it's the payroll summary by employee. I'm going to right click it on this time open in a, in a new tab. And so this one, 
gives you, yeah, I think this is the one I was looking for. So this one gives you, I'm gonna close the hamburger, each individual for what they've earned up until this point in time, I believe. And let's actually run it for the whole period, 0101 to 4 to 02924, and then run it. So now we've got the pay for the two periods. Now note at the end of the year, if someone else was doing your payroll, then they might provide you with a report such as this that you can then use to kind of summary, summarize and make sure that your financial statements tie out to this report, which should also match the, the year in financial reports or tax return reports that you're going to give to the government, the, the quarterly 941s, the 940, the W2 and the W3. So you can think of this as the, the, the two individuals having their gross pay totaling up to 13 966.66, right? If I go to my profit and loss and was to look on my wages, 13,966.66, that should tie out to what you give the government in terms of the 941s and the 940 and so on. And then you've got your uh, employee taxes and deductions. So this is the employee taxes that were taken out each individual and uh, in total. Note that that number is not on your balance sheet on your income statement over here because this tax number is just the employer portion those were the employee taxes that we had to take from the employees and pay on their behalf but it's really part of their pay there's the net paycheck then this is our taxes that we had to pay over and above per each employee for a total of the employer taxes 154045 so if I go to my profit and loss, we can see 154045. Then we made this adjustment to it. But that, that's the problem with adjusting things outside of the system, right? Because this is the number that's going to be tying out to, uh, to the reporting forms that we're going to be creating. So that's going to be our, our uh, taxes. And then you could do a similar report for basically your liability uh, reports. So that's the general idea. So let's see where we stand right now. Here's our balance sheet. We're balancing it, balancing the sheet like a basketball on one finger. And then we've got the profit and loss, spinning it round, spinning it round like crazy. I could balance it and spin it. And then we're gonna go to the trial balance. So if your numbers tie out to these numbers, great. If not, try changing the date, see if it's a date range issue. Remembering this is just simply the balance sheet on top of the income statement, starting with the assets, going from the checking account down to the machinery and equipment, basically debits. That's what the company has measured in dollars, not in, uh, not in units. And then who has claim to those assets? The flip side of the coin, liabilities and equity, starting with liabilities, which start at accounts payable, credit balances, going down all the way to the unearned revenue. And then we have a claim to those assets as the owner, as we can see if we were to transfer the accounting equation to assets minus liabilities equals equity, the book value of the company. We have got the owner investment, kind of like the common stock, if it was a corporation, us putting money into the business, and the owner's equity similar to retained earnings if it was a corporation and then the income statement which is part of owner's equity or retained earnings but broken out for one year's activities where we have income credits minus the expenses debits giving us a net credit on the income statement which will roll into the owner's equity equivalent to the retained earnings if a corporation QuickBooks doing that on a yearly basis. So if we change the date 010125 to 010125, we see that QuickBooks will close out those temporary accounts into the permanent account of owner's equity.